Carrie is the story of a guy played by myself who is um, doing some cleaning up around the house with his wife um, and then he stumbles upon um, something from his past in a time capsule and then once he sees that all of a sudden other things from his past like his imaginary friend start coming back to see him. So I was actually um, watching a lot of stuff like documentaries and stuff about uh, Nirvana oddly enough and um, I was watching this one about Kurt Cobain and I found out that in his suicide note he mentioned his imaginary friend. Um, so that kind of got my brain thinking like how weird it was that during like this tragic time um, he had mentioned an imaginary friend from back in the day and then that got my brain thinking like okay what if like an imaginary friend is attached to some kind of childhood trauma and then the story just kind of grew from there where like you know the imaginary friend is like a metaphor for childhood trauma. So with horror, I'm actually like a big fan of um, stand-up comedy and comedy films, um, oddly enough. But so like with horror, I like to kind of think of it from that same comedic approach because I think comedy and horror kind of cut from the same cloth in a way. Whereas, you know, in comedy, you have setup and punchline. Well, if you do that same thing with horror, you set up something that's scary and then you show why it's scary, so to speak. Um, that works pretty well. So I almost think of my horror set pieces as uh, comedy sequences in the way of set up punchline. Um, I mean, hopefully they don't end up too funny because that kind of negates what I'm going for. Easily the first horror movie that traumatized me was uh, Pet Cemetery. I saw that when I was like 10 years old, probably too young to be watching that stuff. And I'm talking about the original one from 1989. That movie uh, has always gotten under my skin every time I watch it. Um, it's got a lot to say about like um, death and, and what it means not only for the person dying but the people around them and so I really like horror that isn't just scary, it's also got some stuff beneath the surface. Basically with Imaginary Terry it really hit me that you know we have cell phones in our pockets that are capable of shooting in 4k they have decent audio like there's nothing holding you back from the stories that you want to tell but yourself if you're a passionate filmmaker and you have a decent phone there's no reason why you can't shoot the movies that you want to shoot for me it actually makes the movie stronger if there's a limit on budget or you know realistically how do we get this done then you're forced to think outside the box like think about Jaws from 1975 most of the movie you don't see the shark because Steven Spielberg couldn't get the shark to work so that forced him to be creative to show the POV shots of the shark and things like that and I find that to be the same with creating no budget films you know you can't show the monster and, and when you do show the monster it, it has to be quick because you have to hide the fact that it maybe it's a Halloween mask or something like that so it forces you to be creative to to show things in the shadows or very quickly and at the end of the day our minds come up with scarier things than we can actually see so you're putting the power in the viewer um, to almost scare themselves <laughs> I think that horror just changes based on what is currently scary in the world. So like in the 1950s, all the horror movies were atomic monsters and all that kind of stuff because, you know, we had the, the nuclear bomb and radiation and all that kind of stuff. You know, in the um, 60s and 70s, you had like satanic panic, so all the horror movies were, you know, based off the devil and religious stuff. In the 80s, you had like the war on drugs, so there's movies like Brain Damage that are commentaries on like drug culture and things like that. So really it's just you know whatever's scary on the news right now is probably going to be really scary in a couple years when you know your filmmaker uh takes that inspiration to the big screen i know a lot of people probably wouldn't call maholland drive um, by david lynch a horror film um i would just because there's a lot of really um scary and surreal sequences in that film to me personally um so that would probably be my pick because the two things that i love um, in reality and in my films is, uh, you know, weird quirky characters and uh, good soundtracks and the movie has both, so I, I would love to live there. <laughs>